Sawati Club friends. Hey guys, we really do appreciate all the support so far that we've received on the channel. That's why we are running a 100 US dollar prize giveaway when we hit 1000 subscribers on our channel. If you would like to enter, it's super easy, free and quick to do. You just need to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, turn the notification bells on and comment on this video what kind of content do you like to see on the Acro Voyage YouTube channel. That way, we can actually listen to you guys and continue to produce the kind of content that you want to see more of. And the great thing is as well, the more you comment on our videos, the more chances you're going to have of winning that $100. The reason why is because at the end, when we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're actually going to be doing a live stream where we announce the winner live by drawing names out of a hat. So for every time you actually comment, you'll get an extra entry into that raffle. Have a nice day and enjoy the video. Kopkun Club. The first place we stayed in Hua Hin and the cheaper out of the two places was the Hua Hin Spanish Resort Pool and Gym near Beach. Unfortunately, we didn't get too many pictures of the actual room itself, but what I can say is, is that it was a lot smaller than we had expected. It had a 4.75 rating with four reviews. The self-check-in system was really nice and it had all the basic amenities. If you did want to check out any of the accommodation in today's video, I will leave all the links in the description. The cost of the room was roughly £23 per night. What really stood out about the first place was the location being really close to the beach. A cruisy 5 minute walk one way and you would hit the water and 5 minutes towards the main road, you would have access to Cicada <laughs> and the Tamarind night markets which ran on weekends. Whilst the room itself was modern, it was not suitable at all for more than two people. That was the main reason we decided to find another place close by, despite how nice the outdoor experience was here. The pool area was absolutely stunning though, and actually exceeded expectations. They also had a tile bin coffee machine, which is really cheap compared to coffee in the more touristy areas. Also, the aircon lobby was really refreshing and inviting, especially for people looking to work peacefully on their laptops. The gym was also above average, and we managed to train here a couple of times. It was roughly a 7 minute drive to the central shopping malls. The second place in Hua Hin was Ban Kiang Fa Apartments by Pacha the Host. It was actually really close to the previous place, but outside walking distance from the beach. It didn't really matter though, because you could easily get a grab driver to take you wherever you wanted for a very reasonable price. Just be aware though, is that you can often only book for three nights. Three nights come to 288 Australian dollars. All of these prices though, may vary up or down, depending on the time of year that you're booking. The moment we arrived, my internal dialogue immediately said, you get what you pay for. It was significantly cheaper than the previous place, and actually the cheapest option we could find for a family of three. As we entered, I was reminded of that scene from Men in Black, where Will Smith first enters the secret headquarters. The decor on the ground floor common area looked really expensive, but totally random and out of place. Then to make it worse, it was open air. It may sound nice, but in reality, spending more than five minutes there would leave you feeling sweatier than a young boy who had just hit puberty. They had a little area where you could have your mail delivered, but I wouldn't personally get anything super valuable delivered here. The reception staff were friendly, but didn't speak too much English. The car and bike parking was a really thoughtful touch and felt relatively secure. The lifts were pretty old, but considering they had to travel up and down over 20 floors, they were kept in good condition. I have to say the pool area was absolutely fantastic and made up for almost all of the downsides. It may not have been an infinity pool, but it was always kept clean and rarely used when we were there. Here is footage of an overweight man I captured exiting the water after his morning swim. The bike and cardio machines though were in absolutely awful condition and clearly not looked after, which really was a shame. 
I was actually trying to rehab my knee at the time, but due to an obvious defect and a serious clunking noise in one of the bike pedals, I think I actually made my knee worse. The gym was pretty average to be honest, but they did have a really nice view of some city landscapes, as well as a bench press, so men could attempt to push more weight than they should really be lifting. Even though the downstairs communal area seemed like wasted space, the library upstairs was absolutely gorgeous. Although they do shut the door at 9pm, which I just think is way too early, and actually ruined my only experience using it after being asked to politely leave halfway through an important work hall one evening. The table tennis table was of really high quality, and even the bats and balls were in great condition. It reminded me of when I used to play table tennis for hours with my father in the garage. Apart from when he got annoyed when I didn't hit the ball a hundred times into the right corner of the court, it was actually a great time. They even had board games and a nice play area for the kids, which Korea and Asia actually used a few times. The room itself was maybe twice the size of the previous place, so that was great, although the aircon was really old and even when we left it on full blast, it still did not even deliver a refreshing burst of cold air upon entry. The shower and kitchen areas were good enough and we appreciated it being separate from the bedroom area, which is rare for this price range. It would have been nice to know in advance that we had at least 50 plus builders at times literally next door. In reality though, it wasn't too bad, and I actually ended up appreciating watching them work sometimes while enjoying a coffee in the morning. The third and final place was the Lohars Residences in Sukhumvit to Bangkok, a very touristy area, well within walking distance from all the main shopping malls and places to eat. It was slightly on the pricier side though, at 93 Australian dollars per night. Out of the three places though, this was definitely worth the money and far more comfortable than the previous two. Ta -da! This room's roughly 40 pounds a night. But as you walk in, literally on the right hand side, we've got a little kitchen here. So, pretty small fridge. You can't expect too much from a condo. Decent sized sink, you've got a microwave. Looks like there's a fair bit of cupboard space here as well, which is pretty good. Yeah, quite a decent amount of cupboard space there for sure. Pantry. You've got your little electric cooktop there. Pretty good. Complimentary tea and coffee, very nice touch. Bit of water. Compliments of the Lohar's residence. A kettle, the toaster, have a look at that. Bloody hell, not bad. They give you a full bottle of dishwashing liquid. More or less clean sponge, which is good. Place in general definitely looks cleanly. Maybe that's like a little food bin or something like that. Um, they even got a bloody key on the bloody bin. So if you want to open the bin, if you don't feel secure about your waist, you get a little bloody key, you lock that up. Another little bit under here as well. That's going to be my office there, a little office space there. Bit of nice artwork. And look at that, we've got a bloody hallway that extends probably about five meters, which is quite nice. And then there's a huge amount of storage space just here on the left as well. There's aircon unit there for the uh, front section of the condo there. As we walk through this ridiculously long hallway, look at this, I'm here for days. On the right hand side I've got the bathroom here. And the washing machine down the bottom there. Good bit of mood lighting there, that's me in the mirror there as you can see. It's a fairly modern, complimentary toothpaste and toothbrush, I'll be taking that for sure. Couple glasses, and look at that, look at that. We've got the technologically advanced AI generated toilet. Absolutely fantastic. I don't even have to wipe my own butt. And you know you're in a good place when the toilet paper is folded to such immaculate artistic precision. Bloody origami toilet for your butthole. And you've got a spare one on the top, the, the bum gun. The most important thing for any bathroom, whether it be Thai or Western. Shower screen, fantastic. Basic shower there, we'll test the shower pressure later. Soap towels, a bath for Asia, so all the basics you'd expect. Okay, you've even got bloody storage in here as well. Unnecessary amount of storage, but that's fantastic. You can never really have too much. And if we come back out, 
got the sort of bedroom space, little uh, table here with my coffee on it, sorry about that. And little chair there, when you're feeling a bit stressed, you can just sit there and take a few deep breaths. Little baby sort of pen and bed here, rock side to side, Thai style, so that's pretty nice. Bed looks okay. And here's a mirror there. So we can see how overweight we've become on this trip. Decent sized telly, and is there Netflix on it? Oh, you freaking beauty, it looks like it. Looks like it's got Netflix, so we can um, add to our depression in the evening and just numb the world out. Little desk space here as well for Karina. She can sit there, fantastic. Another mirror. Got the phone right there by the bedside. Generally really happy, guys. And this is gonna be the outside. And I've gotta say, a space which actually looks inviting. We didn't go out in a balcony on the last place. Oh, and have a look at this. An anti-jumping net, because the mosquitoes and bugs are gonna get in. And have a look at the view as well. The view's actually not bad. We've got a bit of forestry down there, a bit of greenery we can actually see out. Oh, oh yeah, and then there's a secondary air con there for the bed, which is good too. Oh, you can get me, get me in it. What I don't like sometimes is that the air con is directly over the bed. So I don't always like that. So in the night we could always just have that one off and then just turn the other one on. Yeah. Full blast. Okay. Definitely an upgrade from the previous gym, I have to say. Hopefully the machinery is not too old. You kind of got it all in here. Yeah. It's got a real, it's got a real bodybuilder smell as well, which I enjoy. Right, so there have been people training in here then. What? The men get a jacuzzi? You must be kidding! Oh, and a sauna? And a sauna? We did not get this in the other place. Some people are in there right now, so I just want to give them the privacy of not being in the video, but they might end up being in the video. Actually, <laughs> I ended up giving them no privacy whatsoever. That's alright. <laughs> That's the view. That's the pool. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do take a moment to like it because when you actually like our videos, YouTube actually puts it in front of more people and that's better for the growth of our channel. It simply means that YouTube will show it to more lovely humans like yourself. And if you do want to see us again, make sure you take a moment to subscribe and turn the notification bells on because we upload content every single week. And lastly, if you're feeling extra generous today, there's actually a link at the top of the description of this video where you can actually buy us a coffee for a very small amount. Hope you have a good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Kaap kun kaap.